gather here at this great webinar to talk about automating support ticket analysis using ChatGPT. My name is Danny, and I am the Analyst Relations Manager at Decisions. I'm the guy that talks to Gartner and Forrester and Everest and all the other analysts about how great we are. Um, and you're probably sick of hearing me say how great we are, but I brought another guy to say how great we are today. Frank Mummer, one of our crack sales engineers, is going to talk to us about this amazing process that we built leveraging ChatGPT for our ticket analysis. But before we get going, our friends in India, we are having one of our submersed deep dive training events in Hyderabad, April 23rd to the 25th. We put on these amazing uh, live training events where we get together, we bring our customers, our prospects, our founders, and architects and developers and engineers all together and put them in uh, in the same hotel, uh, same conference center for three days of intensive training in the platform, uh, foundation tr training for people that are uh, just getting started in the platform, but also a master class training. We talk about all the exciting use cases that they've seen um, and things that they're thinking about. I mean, it's a great opportunity to get together and get to know us better. Um, in fact, we'll be at uh, here in Virginia Beach, May 14th through the 16th at our headquarters for another Submerse event where we are uh, previewing version nine of our platform, which is just getting ready to release. And if you're in Europe or uh, Scandinavia, rather, excuse me, uh, at the end of May, we'll be in Stockholm. Uh, these events are a great way to get to know about the platform and get to know us. Uh, check us out at decisions.com forward slash events. While you're there, go ahead and register for our next webinars. The first is uh, optimizing unstructured data using ChatGPT, and that's on Thursday, April the 18th, couple days after tax day, yay. Um, we'll discuss uh, how decisions can automate generative AI to streamline data standardization practices and push that clean, normalized data into your existing systems, saving valuable time and ensuring uh, consistency. And then later in the month, uh, our COO, Gordon Jones, we featured uh, on our partner Tangentia's Impact Dialogues series, uh, talking about driving business agility with a no-code rules engine on Wednesday, April 24th. We'll jump into how uh, uh, our no-code uh, rules engine can be your secret weapon for achieving faster decision-making and improving operational efficiency and enhancing your customer experience. You can register for all of these on uh, decisions.com forward slash events. Now, before we get into the good stuff, uh, you don't have to wait to get a question answered. If something uh, interests you, if you have a question about the platform or would like to set up uh, some time with one of our sales engineers to find out how decisions could help you in your business, just let us know in chat and we'd be happy to answer those uh, live time for you. We want to make sure we answer those questions quickly. Quick overview of the agenda. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what decisions is and what we do. I'm going to talk a little bit about our open AI module and then the specific use case around automating support ticket analysis. Uh, Frank is going to show us uh, how he built this uh, application leveraging ChatGPT to do this analysis. He's going to show us uh, under the hood how he built it and what actually happens behind the scenes. And then we'll also take some Q&A at the end. So what is Decisions? Decisions is a visual software automation platform. Uh, it comes with these elements. The first element is a rules engine. The rules engine gives you a place to centralize and codify business logic um, in, a, uh, um, in one place where you can easily maintain it and, and edit it without writing a single line of code. If you can use natural language to write a sentence or fill out a spreadsheet, you're fully qualified to build the logic for any enterprise class application, no matter how complicated. The second element is a workflow manager. The workflow manager, if you're familiar with platforms like Visio or uh, Lucidchart, it's a very similar build experience. You've got the Windows toolbar across the top, but really the great part is on the left-hand side of the, of the designer studio where our toolbox of over 5,000 custom code steps that we've built for you um, are there to help you build applications. A user simply drags and drops these, um, uh, these code steps onto an empty canvas and links those objects together to build applications and automate standard business processes. Um, it's self-validating and you can debug those workflows right in the same studio. Process mining, the third element was we give you tools to be able to analyze processes end to end. 
to identify bottlenecks in those processes or unexpected user behaviors that are occurring along the way to optimize them and uh, continually iterate on them and develop them. The fourth element is our integration layer. Decisions is an open API platform, which means it can connect to any modern uh, uh, software application. On top of that, Decisions also comes with 70 or so pre-built modules for the most common app business applications. Things like SAP and Salesforce and your ERP systems and CRM systems and databases, and the list goes on. Finally, we give you the, uh, an interface designer to be able to build unique customer and user experiences and interfaces through things like web pages, dashboards, portals, reports, forms, things like that. Over here on the left, uh, if you're looking at the screen, are the three main uh, automation patterns where we really shine. The first of these is a pure business rules or decisioning application. Our rules engine gives you a place to centralize business logic and expose that logic to business users to edit and maintain using graphical design tools. Gets the logic out of stored procedures, web pages, or custom code, or your, your team's head, and and puts it in a, a location where you can easily change it and maintain it without jumping into the code. It's enterprise class, it runs millions of transactions a day across thousands of rules in areas like medical claims processing, insurance underwriting, uh, and, and mortgage processing. The next use case is what we call extend and expand. We work with customers all the time that have major out of the box projects that need to be a part of their automation solution. It could be their CRM system or their ERP or databases or other products that are built to handle a part of the process. Um, Decisions is designed to integrate with these existing out of the box solutions and automate the special processes that these systems don't do well. Things like human in the loop approval processes, for instance. We have several ways to integrate with your existing system landscape. Uh, to do this, uh, you know, we have the several out of the uh, box integrations, as I alluded to, and you, you'll see some of them uh, through the demo. But most importantly, it's an open API platform that can connect to anything. Taking the previous step uh, uh, further, it, uh, we often act as an orchestration layer between different applications. So if you have several different applications that you have users and data in, you can use decisions as a middleware to bring everything together to uh, bring data in from one application and trigger an activity for another user in another application and populate an outcome in, in yet another. The most common use case for decisions is to act as that orchestration layer between various software services or applications and engage end users uh, in workflows that cross those application boundaries. If any of that, thanks for sticking through that part, everybody. Uh, if that interests you at all, the best way to get to know a little bit more about the platform is to spend some time with one of our crack sales engineers, great guys like Frank. Um, if you're interested, you could just drop us an email at sales at decisions.com or just pop it into chat that you're interested and we can uh, make arrangements uh, for a demo for you right now in live time. So whew, a lot of talking, huh, Frank? How do I hey, do it? I don't know, but I have... Much, I have a lot of talking ahead of me here. So I know. Well, I, I, feel I just wanted to take a quick breather and just check the chat and, and encourage anyone, if you have any questions, just drop them right into chat. So let's talk a little bit about the Decisions OpenAI module. We released our OpenAI module in uh, Q2 of 2023, and we've had customers coming to us in droves with lots of interesting use cases on how they can use uh, decisions to leverage large language models to get work done. Uh, not, you know, uh, theoretical things, but things that uh, they can see return on investment in, in AI uh, right now. Uh, so our customers can go uh, in the platform uh, by going into administration, going into features and drilling down. Here's uh, some of the other uh, modules that I mentioned uh, earlier, but by simply installing the open AI module, they'll be able to leverage those large language models. So as we talk about automating support ticket analysis, Frank, why do we want to analyze support tickets and what are the benefits to the, ben to the, excuse me, to the business? Sure. So we want to be able to analyze support tickets in this particular case, in this particular application to uh, kind of surface some data that isn't normally captured and analyzed um, 
with our typical ticket analysis. And that is, in our case, we're going to be really exploring the sentiment of how the customers are doing. Um, mm -hmm. This isn't information that's captured in other metrics like, oh, how long did it take us to resolve that ticket? Or um, was the, the ticket resolution successful in the appropriate amount of time? Things like that. Um, what mm -hmm. we want to know is how well are they doing emotionally? How well are they uh, engaging with the product? Are they satisfied with what they've uh, what they're working with? And we mm -hmm. want to do what we can to identify those info, those uh, those bits of data, so that we can maybe remove frustration from the customer, or uh, steer them down a path that may help them uh, more quickly or or more accurately solve whatever business problems they're encountering. We want them to have a better time working with decisions to solve their problems. So that's what we're really aiming for with this particular analysis. Gotcha. We work so hard to get a new customer and to bring them in and make them part of the decisions family. We want to make them happy. We want to keep them happy over time. Um, uh, so we see that, that, that continuing business exactly. relationship. I love it. So this pretty high level overview of, uh, of the process that you're about to show us, but I think it gives us some, some helpful context. Could you talk through this one a little bit? Yeah, totally. Uh, I will go into a little bit more detail on this in the, uh, the actual demo, but yeah, from a super high level, these are the steps that are happening. We're going to ask the user what kind of data that, uh, decisions should be pulling from the database to then package up with a prompt to send off to chat GPT to ask chat mm -hmm. GPT to please, Hey, can you analysis this, uh, analyze this packet of data we just gave you? And then mm -hmm. ChatGPT does their their thing, and they give us the information back, and we just we process it a little bit more, and in a way that can make the information uh, easier to digest. So we have one last step that Decisions comes in and, and repackages the data in a way that um, may reveal actionable items or um, mm -hmm. just just some guidance for how we may be able to improve our processes. Gotcha, gotcha. And this looks like one of the prompts that you're actually using against ChatGPT to to drive that. This this looks like the art and science part of uh, AI, right? Being able to write these prompts properly to get the responses that you need back from a large language model. Um, you know, uh, how hard is this? This looks hard to me. Uh, it, it kind of does look daunting when you first look at it, but actually this is just plain language we're writing here. We're not doing a whole lot of scripting. There's not a whole lot of coding here. Uh, we are asking mm -hmm. it, hey, can you please, you know, uh, when you come up with your results, can you please uh, package them in a way that we can, uh, our systems can more easily digest it further down the line. Uh, but really, mm -hmm. writing this, all you need to know is how do you construct a sentence? And how do you put several sentences together asking a, a robot to do a particular task for you? Super simple, actually. Awesome. That makes sense. Why can you show us what you built? Absolutely. All right. I should be showing this. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, hi, everybody. Once again, for those who may be joining late, my name is Frank Mumbert, and I'm a pre-sales engineer with Decisions. Uh, my job right now is to continue exploring what opportunities for internal process improvements are available when we leverage Decisions as an orchestration layer uh, to connect our business logic to large language models like ChatGPT. Um, it's an ongoing effort to solve one of the biggest problems in business. How do we take a massive amount of data and analyze it in a way that the big takeaways become easily digestible and we can then maybe develop an informed action plan or uh, just find out how to improve ourselves? Uh, as we've said a few times, today is about customer support ticket analysis. Uh, like any businesses who have been in the game for a while, we have a large repository of customer support requests. Uh, these can range the gamut from simple clarifications on how to accomplish something with a flow step uh, to requests for help on setting up system integrations to you know, big things that uh, could affect our product like feature requests or bug reports. Uh, I have built a pretty simple process that allows us to pull a batch of customer support tickets, analyze their content looking for patterns, and then deliver that data via a couple different formats depending on the preferences of the end user. If you've attended a few of these webinars, you may recognize our pretty standard dashboard we kick off these webinar projects with. So I'm going to go ahead and click the button to kick off our process today. I love it that we have everybody's picture in there. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. That's so us. Uh, so we are shown a form that allows us to go down one of two paths. Uh, when we spoke with our internal stakeholders for this project, they identified two useful analysis processes that could help them out. The first was, of course, to process all the support tickets submitted by a single company to try to figure out patterns and such that we could engineer some action items from. Uh, the mm -hmm. second was also pretty interesting. 
having a way to analyze the tickets worked by our customer support representatives to see how they each were doing with resolving tickets in a satisfactory manner. Um, the hope was that with that information, we could maybe inform some new training initiatives, uh, recognize employees that are doing well, and identify those that can maybe use a little bit more training to bring them in line with our standards. Um, if you'll notice, if I click on the employee radio button and come over here, our dropdown gets populated with the email addresses of our real support employees. Uh, we could certainly click one of these and run them through the logic. Uh, but for our demo, I'm going to pick the company radio, or I'm sorry, the, the customer radio button here. And the dropdown is now populated with company names. If you've attended any of my webinars before, you know that this is a fake list of company names. Uh, there is logic on the back end to pull real company data based on selecting one of these. It kind of swaps the name out. Uh, but for the purposes of the webinar, uh, we like to keep the real client data anonymous. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll select the first one here. And I will ask the system to pull a real set of tickets from a real customer. And while it is doing that, we'll just give it a second here while it processes. In the actual application of this logic, it would pull all the tickets of a customer for the mm -hmm. webinar purposes. I have it just pulling two or three tickets to keep the time here manageable when you see that. Um, pulling the gotcha. tickets from the, yeah, pulling the tickets from the database isn't particularly time consuming. Uh, but if you've ever worked with chat GPT before, you know, it takes more and more time, the more data you hand it and the total data will probably be more useful than a small data set. Uh, but expediency is the name of the game today. Um, so right. here we go. This is easy. Uh, we now have, uh, what we're looking for in our case, a sentiment analysis. We've totally done these before, like with our risk scoring analysis webinar, Basically, we're asking ChatGPT to look through the communication artifacts of these customer support tickets and determine, hey, is the customer happy or not? Are the mm -hmm. messages, are they like, are they effusive using language like, thank you so much. You're amazing. Frank is so cool. Right. Things like that. Or are the messages curt? Do they not even have a thank you? Are they dismissive? Danny is, Danny is terrible. We Get hate Danny. Danny. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we asked ChatGPT to read through that text parse the sentiment and give us a score. Uh, so what do we do then with that score? Well, I'll, I'll show you in one second. Uh, just before navigating off the screen, I want to show you uh, that we can email this to this analysis to our list of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's going to be over here now. Exciting stuff. We could also have downloaded that form. Uh, it is attached here. So you can see it. Nice. So we could download it or it could be attached to the email. It's all pretty cool. Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and get rid of this window. Okay. Uh, also, I don't know if anybody saw. I just want you to kind of like pay attention to this text a little bit here, especially the word redacted as it gets called out a couple of times. Because I'm going to show you in just a second uh, where this is on a dashboard that I created. So I have two dashboard pages. The first here is going to be our customer support ticket sentiment analysis uh, from the customer perspective. Below are the company analysis that have been run with the analysis date and the score and the text of the summary. Uh, this one right here, hey, our redacted one. Um, this is the one we just ran. Uh, so up at the top, I have an average sentiment score uh, of all the analyses that have been run, uh, what they were three months ago, what they were six months ago, a year ago. We can use this as a simple snapshot of the overall trending. On a, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, on a scale of one to five, we probably want to stay above a four. So while this actually looks pretty good, uh, yeah, we should still dig into some of these and, and figure out if we really earn these scores or if maybe we need to tweak how we're asking chat GPT to analyze common threads and, and on the tickets. Um, if we want to, we can totally uh, analyze or uh, simplify this down to a single company. So let's go ahead and do like a partial string match. Hey, COVID check incorporated our fake company. Uh, you'll notice that the overall sentiment score changed all of the uh, other subsequent scores changed um so we can also potentially add more filtering criteria to this in the future um mm -hmm. so for example we could get the tickets of certain date ranges or show us all the tickets that got a two or show us all the analyses that captured a feature that we want to support better that's that's all customizable so let's go ahead and clear that filter out we'll go ahead and navigate to the other one mm -hmm. uh the other dashboard same kind of thing, except that this is uh, more focused around our customer support agents and the sentiment scores on their tickets. Uh, so full disclosure, this is set up to run just like the company-centric version of the logic, uh, mm -hmm. but I have populated this report entirely with fake data. Since these are real employees and I'm not pulling all of the data for the demo, uh, my fear was that maybe I would pull only the tickets uh, from mm -hmm. maybe the one week somebody was struggling. Uh, it happens. We're human. 
Uh, so if you if you were an active customer and your customer support agent was here on this list and that was showing like a 3.0, I didn't want anybody to get the wrong impression, you know, <laughs> to man a CS agent. So these are all fake tickets. Um, right. But, but also, the point is, it gives us the ability to not only kind of gauge the customer sentiment, but also our performance as a team and how well we're supporting them. And then it gives us the ability as managers to be able to align resources to support our own team better, to get them the training or or, or, or help uh, uh, figure out where they're struggling and, and help them through that. Absolutely. Great 100%. point. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's the, what the start and the end of this process looks like. There's a form that pops up asking you to uh, identify the, the customer or the employee you want to uh, run the analysis on, and then there's that second form that pops up where you can send the email or download the form. Uh, gotcha. So let's go into the logic here and actually uh, take what this looks like, uh, look at what this looks like. Um, so first off, you will notice that this is actually pretty easy to set up. We have that slide that had the the four steps. This is six steps, but like these first two steps were that first step. So they kind of consolidate a little bit in the uh, in the PowerPoint deck presentation. But mm -hmm. um, first step here, uh, we get that pop up form asking us uh, who we'd like to run the sentiment analysis on, and if it's a customer or an employee. Uh, next, we use an API call or two uh, between this server and the server where we keep our customer support tickets. Uh, that particular mm -hmm. server is called Tirade, and you may see that name crop up in a few, pl a few places. Um, once we have the ticket, we run it through a process to construct the prompt, and we're going to send it off to ChatGPT. The fourth mm -hmm. step is has us sending the prompt off to ChatGPT and getting the conversational response back. The fifth, we take those results and we use decisions to pick out what we need and prepare the data for delivery. And the last step in this process is the bit of formatting we need to do to get that data delivered to those interested. And that's it. Nothing nothing too terribly complicated, right? So let's dive into a few of the more interesting steps. The first and second parts here of our logic are just the system gathering input from the user and the database where the tickets are stored. Mm -hmm. So we could probably just skip over those for right now. Since... Since this is a webinar about exploring what ChatGPT can do for us, let's start uh, by looking at the prompt that we're going to send then. So we're going to grab this step right here. So this is this is where we're going to write our prompt. Our first step is going to route us through the logic based on whether or not we selected an employee or company uh, to source mm -hmm. the pool of tickets. Uh, right now, both prompts are very similar. Uh, I split them up in case they needed to be fine-tuned independently of one another to given the source of the data that we're trying to analyze it, it's a little bit different between the two. So they may Makes need sense. slightly different wording, um, but we're going to take a look at the prompt for our company path here. And it may look familiar because we showed it off in that PowerPoint deck. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go through this a little bit here and uh, make some observations about this. If you attended our risk scoring webinar, this is actually very, very similar to that same prompt. Um, so first off, we established some guidelines for chat GPT. Hey, pretend like you are a graduate of Harvard Business School. That kind of puts it into a mindset of how the response it's going to deliver should be formatted, like what kind of level of education, um, the language it should use, the vocabulary, the the sentence syntax, things like that. Uh, well, we, yeah. Uh, if we asked it to pretend to be like a kindergarten student, it would have definitely uh, a different response to us. Um, I don't know if it will change based on different uh, Ivy League schools. I'm sure that there's an argument to be had there. Um, all we're doing now, this is the this is maybe yeah, the the part that if you have a coding background, this is the the step that uh, maybe you would benefit from that here. Uh, what we're doing is we're asking it to categorize its data in two separate property values on the return. We want one to be called the sentiment analysis. And it's going to be formatted as a string. And we gave it an example, like, hey, this is what a string looks like. Sentiment analysis. The other one is going to be a sentiment analysis score. We're asking it to give us a number back. And here are your instructions. If we very clearly identify that for ChatGPT, because we actually use the expression, here are your instructions. For sentiment analysis, we wanted to go through all of the, the data that we're going to give it, all of the, the bodies of the messages going back and forth, and mm -hmm. identify uh, the different levels of emotion that may be reflected in those. So interest, enthusiasm, doubt, disinterest, we wanted to go through all of those and evaluate the overall sentiment of their responses and then assign it uh, a score. So yeah, consider tone, choice of words, context, and everything. And the scores we go, we we can tell it, hey, give it a score of one to five, but it has no context of what a three is in that particular case. So uh, we, we identify for it, hey, a score of five, they are super interested and excited. A three uh, they're they're somewhat interested, but uh, they are also not super engaged. And then a one mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, they're getting ready to leave us. 
Uh, the customer shows no interest or a negative stance. Yeah, so now that it has a little bit of context, it knows how to assign number values to things. Um, yeah, we ask it, hey, you know, please also like justify your reasoning so we can double check that your score looks correct given uh, given next to your summary. Um, we also ask it to uh, some some formatting uh, guidelines here. Hey, single string, we're going to, mm-hmm. just because how we're going to be handling this information later, we don't want it to get too creative with its formatting. We're going to tell it exactly how we want that information. Um, unique to this, and it would be deleted if I weren't doing a webinar, I ask it to please redact certain proper names and things like that. Again, I'm trying to protect customer anonymity during these presentations here. Um, so that's all the the sentiment analysis. Now, while we were asking it to go through and, hey, you know, if you could think of a number to score that particular thing, this is where mm-hmm. we go, okay, now that you have that score, actually map it to this property. Uh, mm-hmm. give, us, give us an integer, so don't give us decimal values, just stick to whole numbers. Uh, and don't give us any text preceding or following the output. That way we don't have to clean up that data when we get it back. We can just go ahead and plug it into our math. And uh, we say, hey, JSON format, we could tell it to do an XML format. We could tell it to do plain text. It's fine. Um, and again, like, hey, do a JSON format and use JSON syntax. You have to sometimes be mm-hmm. very, very clear with that GPT. It will do its level best to do what you ask it to do. You just have to be very clear with what you want it to do. As and, if you were speaking to a child. Kind of, yeah. It, it takes instructions literally. I know uh, nobody in computer science has ever encountered a, a robot or system that takes instructions literally. So I'm going to warn you all right now. <laughs> uh, Chad, you know, the, yeah. this is awesome, right? Like, uh, uh, especially the scoring, right? Uh, um, the one, the dreaded number one, right? No mm-hmm. one wants to be there. It's It's five times as expensive to go out and get a new customer that it is to keep the customers that we already have, right? That's really the business value of, of having that sentiment analysis. This is brilliant. Yeah. Uh, then the last thing we do, we have a variable value uh, in the flow, which was all of that support ticket stuff that we pulled in the first two steps. We're just going to mm-hmm. append that to the end of this prompt here so that it knows uh, it has the prompt and it has all the information it needs in a single payload here. So that's how that works. So like I said, the employee one is uh, almost exactly the same. Uh, so let's move on to the next step in this process. And that is the actual handing this off to chat GPT. Uh, so this is super complicated. Hold on one second. I'll, I'll let it load. Okay. You just scared me. Yeah. I went to community college, Frank. So speak slowly. All right. So I'll let you, I'll let you take this all in. Okay. So yeah, it is just one step and all that's happening here. Let me click it. All that's so happening easy. here. Yep. We are just sending off. Our prompt and getting a conversation reply. Uh, we are, I don't think we've covered this before. Let me, uh, we were using the chat GPT 3.5 turbo chat model uh, because mm-hmm. it, it strikes the right balance of affordability and, and processing power. Like I said, I don't know if we've ever actually covered this in a prior webinar, so I'll bring it up now. No, uh, we haven't. This is and, good, good info. Yeah. Uh, using chat GPT through open AI's web portal is free. You can go type into that portal all you want. Um, however, connecting through an API like we're doing costs money. Mm-hmm. So using Chat GPT four, which is one step above this, costs about forty five dollars for one million input and output tokens. Uh, that's not terrible, uh, but for just the tiniest bit in performance, we can use Chat GPT three point five Turbo right here, and it costs about one dollar instead of forty five for the same number of tokens. Everything's so, faster when you stick a turbo on it. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's how they got extra performance out of it. Uh, so that's actually like a savings of 98% for no real time cost given the scale that we're working at. Uh, for the, That's an important consideration for sure. Definitely. You know, I also wanted to plug that uh, um, uh, we are also currently investigating lots of other large language models, uh, not just Chat GPT, OpenAI, but uh, Anthropic and and uh, um, I'm several other contenders. Like Vertex, CC in there as well. Yeah. yeah, Vertex, the whole deal. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, for the benefit of anyone watching this webinar way into the future, and they want to know where to look up the the current model, if you're sticking with Chat GPT, uh, their prices are listed at OpenAI.com/pricing. You can go check it out there. Uh, so let's look to our next flow. We we've sent off our prompt, and we're getting a reply back from Chat GPT, and that reply mm-hmm. is getting passed over to the next flow. Let's check it out. So our first two steps here, guy one, guy two, 
uh, sort of echo that prompt that we sent off to chat GPT. We mm -hmm. asked it, we asked it to prepare its results as a JSON payload. We specifically asked it to package that return into two separate properties, the, the sentiment analysis as text and the sentiment analysis score on a scale of one to five. These steps grab those specific properties and surface them in a way that decisions flow designer here can use them as variables. Uh, it then takes those two pieces of data. It takes the customer's name or the employee name, depending on what path we're going, and the current date time, and it creates a data entity right here. We're going to go ahead and build out a uh, support ticket analysis customer data entity. Like I said, mm -hmm. we're going to pass in the current date time. We're going to give the customer's name, sentiment analysis score, and the sentiment analysis. And this creates a database entry for this analysis in the database. And that information is visible on those dashboards that I showed you earlier. So that big report underneath the uh, the header where it had the summaries of the scores and everything, that's where this data gets surfaced uh, that you can check it out. Um, just a quick note here on decisions capabilities. Uh, these data structures are currently set up with just a few properties. I mean, look, there's like really only four here. Um, it, we could totally add more properties to this structure at a later time if there are other things we want tracked. Um, decisions will refactor these data types without issue. Cool? Cool. Yeah, right. Frank, the, the the diamond in the middle, that's a rule, right? Yes, sir. Uh, and is that that's just uh, verifying whether or not it's a customer? So it's yep. making a call out and just running some logic in the background? Yeah, so uh, in that first form when we picked a customer or uh, employee, that was a variable uh -huh. being saved as analysis target. And it's just uh -huh. asking, hey, was the analysis target customer? If that's true, yeah, we're going to create one for a customer. If it's not, then we're going down the employee path. Got it. Super. Thank simple. you. Yes, sir. I told you I went to community college. I, there is a second way we can handle that. I'm curious if I did it in this one. No, I did not, but that's fine. Um, so this flow is going to package up our analysis two different ways. Uh, first, this format analysis results step takes our data and formats it into an HTML body. Um, later, when we have the option to send the analysis data in an email, this is what, where the body of that email is created. Um, yeah, so uh, next we have our old friends, uh, a step to take a Word doc and swap it out, uh, swap out the declared tokens in it for uh, text values that we map in. I, you know what? I don't think in all of these webinars, I've actually shown what that setup looks like. So let's let see it. Yeah, let's put up uh, the template doc here and you can see me actually what we do to configure it. Uh, so this is what it is. This is the template. All you do is identify your variable tokens uh, with these braces. And I even did it with this, this heading value here. Uh, so I can use the same template if we're doing analysis on the company or on an employee. Uh, mm -hmm. You remember, we were just talking about that with that rule that got evaluated earlier. So this, when it's ready to go, this will either say company colon or the, the company's name colon, or it'll say uh, employee colon and that loveliness. Um, Make, make note of uh, these words here because we're about to check them out here in a second. Um, and let me let me interrupt. Uh, and previously, when you were showing the the uh, the email and the editor, that was using uh, dynamic HTML and mapping to those same data elements. Correct. Correct. Just right here. Yep. So Very easy. So everything can be standardized and and for each individual analysis. Yep. And as we add more things, we decide we want to track more things. It's just a simple matter of you know putting a header in here and just dragging and dropping no, the variable in. Yep. Very cool. Thank you. All right. So uh, back to this step here. Uh, mm -hmm. This is where you just drag and drop that document from your, your file explorer uh, into the flow step. And you can see mm -hmm. that it surfaces all of those property tokens. All you have to do then in decisions is just map your flow variables into the step. And at runtime, it'll make you that handy dandy document for you. No problem. Uh, yeah. So uh, back to talking about the overall, overall flow logic here. Uh, the next step turns that Word doc into a PDF so that it can be opened by a wider uh, array of applications than just Microsoft Word. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then the, the next step takes that PDF and it renames it something unique for our downloading purposes. And the potential last step uh, shows us the document in that decisions document viewer and prompts us to either download the PDF and or have it emailed to us, uh, which would send us down this path where uh, you would want to make this a little bit more dynamic. Uh, but for demo purposes, I just hard coded my own name in here. Sure. Yeah. So before I start to wrap this up, uh, there is one other cool thing in this process that I want to bring up. 
Uh, do you remember how I said there wasn't anything particularly interesting going on in these first two flow steps? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's not actually 100% true. Uh, um, what we actually have is a second application of ChatGPT, but maybe not in a way that many people would have imagined. We yeah, don't need to say it. Um, so when I pull a ticket from our database, it's it's a little messy. Uh, let me show you what a ticket can look like. Whoa. Oh, this is this is one ticket from one customer. What am I supposed to do with this? Uh well, this is what Where's we're asking. The... Yeah, this is where we're asking ChatGPT to uh, determine client sentiment. So uh, can you look at this and tell me how the client's feeling? No, my eyes hurt. And I have uh, a tiny laptop and I'm old. Yeah, and I've been wow. looking at these all week. Yeah, like, where even is the question? I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll do you a favor. It's right here. This is what the, where the question is. At all of that. It's a so, lot of data. Yeah. Um, all this extra stuff is is not necessarily ideal for what we are trying to get done. So mm -hmm. let's let's clean it up with Chad GPT, shall we? Let me. Yeah. There's so much text here, it's making me lose my mouse. All right, so right here, this guy. This here is a simplified version of what's happening in that second flow step where I said nothing interesting was happening. I kind of lied a little bit. Um, this is where we clean up that ticket data so Chad GPT can more easily and more reliably get us uh, useful analysis. And mm -hmm. Cards on the table here. ChatGPT isn't always perfect. The more what? you can, yeah, I know, right? Shocker. The more you can do to clean up that data it's working with, the more specific you can be with your prompts, and the more piecemeal you piecemeal you can make its instructions, the better. Um, it's built on human language models, so it's not flawless. But the trade-off and the volume of work it can tackle when you set it up correctly is staggering. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're we're passing in the raw ticket data. I just made a little create data step here um, mm -hmm. for for transparency's sake, uh, revealing a little bit of the magic here. Uh, before pasting that big block of text in here, I did mm -hmm. run it through a process to cut out the image data that was attached to that ticket that was mm -hmm. stored as 64-bit file data. Uh, Which in this would take case, forever. Yeah, yeah. In this case, the request for help was submitted by email. So the request was okay. company logo an image link for their Facebook uh, page, an image link to their Twitter or X, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, th things like that. They were all part of that payload. Uh, it's easy enough to write logic that just cuts those out. And uh, it takes up time in a demo, and I don't want to waste that time. So uh, the ticket data pasted in here already has the, those images cut out. Um, so let's let's look at our prompt. This might take a little while to read. All right. Super big, super long. Very, like we were saying, it's actually right. super easy to set these up. As long as you can just type in plain text, you're you're mm -hmm. fine. So we're asking it to start getting rid of the stuff we don't need and to organize it as a JSON payload. That's what this first chat GPT conversation is going to do, this this guy right here. Um, so this can take about 30 seconds to complete. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up our debugger so that it can get to work while I keep explaining this. So let's fire up the decisions debugger here. This is one of the things that I love about the platform the most, being able to de debug the stuff that you're working on in, without compiling code and shipping it off to a test bed. This is one of the things that makes decisions five times faster than traditional development. Sorry, Absolutely. I always have to plug that. No, go for it, man. Um, I mentioned earlier that if you can ask ChatGPT to do things piecemeal, you tend to get more reliable results than trying to make it do everything at once. Uh, so what are we doing with this second chat GPT step? Really, to do the sentiment analysis, I just need the words from the messages that were exchanged between the customer and our customer support agent. Um, so while this first step organizes it into a JSON payload, the second one asks it to pare it down the payload even further and just give me the ticket number, the original client request for help, and the customer support agent's closing notes. A real payload for the sentiment analysis needs to be a little bit more than this, but I just want to demonstrate that ChatGPT can help you in ways that you may not have considered. In this case, it's cleaning up data from one system, make it digestible by another, with decisions serving as the orchestration layer to help drive this process. So let's let's take a look at what it did here. Uh, we're going to look at the, the output of this guy. And remember, this is the step we're asking it. Please clean that up, get rid of all the HTML tags, just turn it into a JSON payload. So that should look like just a property name and then what the name, what the value is next to it. And it looks like it's done exactly that. Looks a lot better than the other one you showed. Yeah, definitely. I can almost read that. And then the next step is 
please just grab me those three things, the ticket name, mm -hmm. the uh, what the client asked for, and what our ultimate response was. Hopefully it works. Sometimes it, it doesn't, but fingers crossed here. Um, so, yeah, hey, it gave me the ticket number. Perfect. It gave me their issue. They asked me, they said, hello, support. Is there a way to select the rows from a, a actor form flow? Yeah. And then mm -hmm. our results, our customer service agent sent the message with the explanation, attached an example project. But yeah, perfect. So this is, I don't need all of this going to chat GPT to figure out the sentiment. What mm -hmm. I need is maybe a couple steps ahead of it just to send off the exact data that I wanted to actually process. Because if I ask it to determine the sentiment and it just randomly grabs this chunk of text to start processing, it's not going to know what to do with that information. It will try. It will come back with a number and it will say the the customers seem very confused and responded with random characters. Um, that's not helpful to any of us. So cleaning right. it up first is, is super helpful. Um, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, this inspires some other possible applications here. I know there was a project I worked on to modernize the data from a database from the 1990s. Uh, standard, yeah, standardizing it to the client's new standards and copying it to a new system. This would have been wildly helpful to help clean up that data that had 30 years of different formats and copious amounts of null fields. Uh, right. What ended up happening was that took about six months of work, and with this, I could have maybe done it in a week or two. Uh, it's too late for me, but maybe this can help one of you in the future. Never too late for you, Frank. Uh, it's never too late for you. Sometimes, maybe it is. All right, so let's go back here. Uh, let's go. Edit flow. Uh, so, where do we go from here? Uh, well, to give you all a peek behind the curtain, like I said, this tool is intended for us, decisions to actually use. Uh, if we can get it into a presentable enough state, we'll put it up on our app store with the functionality in place to connect it to your own ticket storage databases, but not ours, because that won't help you. Um, it still has some work left to be done to it as we uh, we take a look at the nice-to-have feature list uh, noted by our internal stakeholders. Uh, one of the features could be something like figuring out the time it takes between a request for help being submitted, the first response to that request, and then our final resolution to that request. Obviously, mm -hmm. faster times are going to be better. And this would give us a second metric besides just sentiment to measure how well we're supporting our, our partners and our, our customers. What about the... Results we get when we run a ticket analysis for one of our employees. Uh, what can we do with that? Ultimately, we'd like to see it recommend training plans for employees who are struggling or identify topics that the whole team could benefit from getting trained on. Um, I know this may shock people, but our customer support team isn't perfect. Don't get me wrong. They are great at what they do and they are smarter than me, but there's always room for improvement. Um, identifying where to focus those improvement efforts gets us more effective employees and ultimately happier clients. Um, in the end, what we're trying to do with this is what a lot of companies aspire to be able to do. Process huge amounts of data to effectively inform our strategies. Real data does so much better to guide us than hunches or guesses or any other similar driving forces that are impacted by our biases and predispositions. We're turning qualitative data into quantitative in the hopes that the numbers are more reliably actionable than our feelings. Um, with this system, we can get rapid analysis of all of our data, not just a sample that a human can get done in eight hours. We can identify patterns in our sentiment trends. We can figure out how best to train our employees so that we're not wasting money on less effective strategies. We can also, hey, figure out if our key performance indicators we set up a while ago are still measuring the best things to guide us to successful customer support outcomes or if there are metrics that we haven't been looking at because it never occurred to us. This can help us identify any red flags in our processes that should be revamped or maybe even scrapped entirely. Improving on any one of these can help us save money and deliver a better experience for our partners and our clients. So uh, that's where our, our my part of the demo ends for today. I hope you all come away with this uh, inspired with the ways that maybe you two can save money or improve processes with just a couple of flow steps. Um, so for me, thank you for your time. I kick it now back over to Danny. Danny. Man, that, that was so awesome, Frank. I think that's really a great demonstration of what uh, large language models are good at right now. With all the hype around uh, uh, artificial intelligence, this is a real actionable, tangible return on investment way to use a large language model to help your business. And I think a great demonstration of what it's great at right now. Everybody thinks, yeah, we're going to, you know, build a moon colony with AI like next week. That's not happening. But what 
chat GPT, what open API, what op uh, these other large language models are really good at is structuring unstructured data, making it usable from, uh, from some of the examples that we saw here today. So thanks so much. If, if, uh, I'm checking the chat here, if anyone has any questions, um, do want to make a plug uh, for our next webinar Thursday, uh, the 18th, we're going to be talking about just this, uh, um, particular, uh, topic on optimizing unstructured data using ChatGPT. We would love to see you there. Um, also, uh, check us out at, um, at decisions.com forward slash events. And if you're interested in t uh, seeing more of the platform and how it could relate to your business, hit us at sales at decisions.com. I see we have a question. Would you please discuss what the support ticket information, the data that is sent to ChatGPT is and how you got that? Is it in uh, videos of calls? Actually, um, I'll, I'll, I'll take a crack at answering this one, anonymous attendee, I'm Danny. Um, so uh, we can pull this data from all of the above, from calls, from notes, from emails, from call recordings. Um, we've done several in this uh, series of webinars, um, leveraging uh, our Gong platform uh, to uh, uh, to drive some of our decisions. So absolutely, yes. It's an open API platform and it can connect to all sorts of different um, sources and use all sorts of different data. So I think that concludes for today, Frank. What an amazing job, man. Thanks so much. This is a huge value add for us as we try to keep our customers happy and keep them for a long time, man. Thanks so much for all the work that you put into this. Hey, it's been a blast. Thank you. Right on, man. Chase, play us out, brother. Thanks everyone so much for joining. Be sure to check us out again Thursday, April 18th from 1 to 2 as we talk about optimizing unstructured data using ChatGPT. Everybody have a great day. Thanks so much.